Today in the bunker, we're going to make a burned out ruin suitable for the wasteland. To begin with, we're just going to use make some bases. Uh, and I've cut these out of chipboard. You can use cardboard, you can use foam core, whatever you want to use. Um, we're going to paint both sides of this to kind of seal it a little bit. Um, sometimes I use sanding sealer, but I think it's kind of overkill for these projects. We're going to get some paint on these. Now I just took a, a Sharpie and drew out sort of an organic shape. You could do these straight edged if you wanted. It's no problem. I just prefer that kind of organic look. So no right or wrong answer. After that paint dries, and I just rattle canned that. It was warm enough today to go outside and do that. I'm starting a foundation. I just used some off cuts of foam. You could use foam core. You could use whatever. I scored bricks into it. You could leave it smooth or put some sand on it for concrete or whatever. It's just free form, however you want to do it. So I'm going to let that set up with some PVA, and then we'll start to add a floor and some wall sections. One note about doing these, if you have foam or whatever material with a flat face, put that to the outside. If it's uneven on the inside, it doesn't really matter as much. We're going to put rubble and whatnot in there, so that'll cover a multitude of sins. Another consideration is the orientation of how the house was put together uh, will kind of dictate which way you want to put the uh, floor supports, the joists. Um, in this case, I'm going to do them going this way, but on some of these, I may do them the other way. It doesn't really matter. It's just whatever appeals to you. Now here I've cut out just a piece of chipboard that's going to act as part of the flooring. We're going to put that on there, and then we'll, we'll jagged it up a little more, and we're going to glue our joists to the bottom. But we'll, I'll show you that in a minute. All right, and what we're going to do is take this and lay it on there first to make sure that everything is fairly square, and it is. It doesn't have to be perfect, but it should match up fairly well. And then I've got, as a witness mark, I sort of have this notch cut out, so on the other side I made a line. And then I'm going to measure at regular intervals, whatever looks good. Um, and then we'll glue our pieces on there, uh, being mindful of the spacing here as well. That's why a more regular internal shape might be a little helpful, but it's not entirely necessary. So let me get those glued on and we'll see what we get. All right, so I did one centimeter spacing. What I'm going to do is just glue... I'm going to take pieces of coffee stir, but you could use balsa wood, you could use pieces of chipboard, whatever, and we're going to glue them so that they stick out a little bit underneath. We're going to glue them down here. You could use PVA, hot glue, super glue, whatever works. I'm going to PVA them in this case. And it probably helps to make the ends a little jagged before you glue them on. All right, and as you go, you'll end up with something that looks kind of like that, so that when it's turned over, these will stick out. And you can also put in some pipes or some wires or whatever happens to strike your fancy. It's also one of the reasons I like tacky glue is it gives you a bit of working time plus it will hold those coffee stirrers in place quite well. Uh, super glue will do it but you got to be a little quicker. And of course hot glue same thing probably a little more working time than some of the others but um, whichever way you do it it'll be fine. Since gluing things on top of the foam will make it difficult to paint this later, I went ahead and put a coat of Mod Podge and black paint on there. Uh, you could use gesso, you could use just regular paint. That would be fine, but I want to spray paint this again later um, with a rattle can, so I want to be sure to protect the foam as best I can, because I don't trust that I can keep the proper distance. And while you're adding that protective coating, if you slop it onto the base, no big deal. We're going to cover that up later, so you don't have to be super neat. While the floor sections are drying, I'm going to go ahead and fill in along the inside here a little bit of our ground cover. In this case, I'm going to use some sand. I'm kind of doing this in phases. Um, we'll put the sand on, and then we'll paint all of these things, then glue them together because it's a pain to try and paint underneath them. All I do is just lay down a coat of PVA and then just take some sand. This is sand from a construction site I got years ago. And we'll just lay that on there. Normally I would do this over like a paper plate or something to catch it, but it's, it's on the base itself, so I'll throw a little bit of it on the table. 
I'm going to let that firm up for a little bit and then I'll pour the excess back into the container and then we'll do it to the rest of them. Also doing it in stages like that will help prevent warping also even though we've sealed this we want to be try to be sure it doesn't actually warp. That took a bit to dry um, the sand and everything but that's fine I wasn't in a huge hurry with this build but I went ahead and rattle can primed all of the pieces that are going to be kind of covered up or underneath something and would be difficult to paint otherwise and you could easily brush paint that no big deal I just rattle canned it because it was fast now that I've got these bits primed black I'm going to go ahead and just take a little bit of PVA and we'll lay a bead down I cut out 17 minutes of bottle squeezing anyway I just lay down a, a bead of PVA glue and then put this in place and just get it to grab where I want it to be. If it leaks out a little, just smooth that out with your finger. Doesn't have to be perfectly aligned. But get it as straight as you can. And then once that sets up, we'll start adding the uh, upper layers of that. All right, to build the walls, I'm going to use pieces of basswood or balsa wood uh, and make some actual upright posts. We're going to make some support pieces. It'll be fairly strong hopefully once it's done. I'm going to build the wall sections and glue them together laying down and then we'll set them up on there. So we'll put our footer board down and glue it to our uprights and all that good stuff. So it'll be, um, should be fairly strong. There's the first part done, and I came to the realization that to make it faster and stronger, I should go ahead and make the outer surface first. You know, I'm not going to put the siding on it, but I can glue all of this to that outer wall, kind of that outer plywood, if you would, on a, on a real house. Um, so we'll, um, we'll do that going forward. Here's the basic structure finally put together. Uh, while that glue sets up, I'm going to go ahead and finish the basing. Just to break up the flatness of the base, I added some little bits of detritus, some foam, some more sand, some broken up pieces of wood. So we're going to let that set up and then we will hit that with some black rattle can primer and uh, I'll probably paint over this foam first, but then we'll go ahead and prime that and get started painting. Right, to start off with, I'm going to do the base and I just used some nutmeg brown paint use whatever base color paint you're going to use. I put uh, about 50-50 paint and water and put a few drops of Magic Wash, which is future floor polish and water. Uh, you could use a tiny bit of washing up liquid, just something to break the surface tension. And then when you put it on your ground cover, it'll kind of get down in there and flow a little better. So you don't have to scrub at it to get the color you want. Okay, and just apply that to taste. Because this is the inside of the house where it burned, I'm going to leave this black. I just did the brown on the outside. So we'll let that set up and we'll start picking out these uh, concrete foundation blocks. For this, I'm just going to use a pewter gray, but just use whatever medium to dark gray you have as a base color. And then just go in here and uh, kind of pick these blocks out. Try not to get it down on your, your ground color. If you get it up on the wall a little bit, that's fine. We're going to cover that up with something else. So, And if you can kind of stipple it on there, that helps make that texture and sort of sells the idea that that's a concrete block. While I've got that gray color on my palette, I'm going to go ahead and take a makeup brush and just start kind of over brushing all of the burned area and we'll start to build up that kind of ashy look and again this is to taste just do it until it looks as burned as you want it to look that helps pick a lot of detail out so we're going to let that set for just a minute and then we'll do the same thing with a little bit of white or actually a very very light gray and then we'll hit it with a final highlight of white just at the very top all right i want to add a little bit of color to the outside of the house just to kind of brighten it up and make it not be completely 
black and gray and ground color. So I'm going to take a sponge, but you could stipple this on with a brush. You could just paint it. It would be fine. But I'm just going to add a little color, in this case blue, but just use whatever color you like. And then when we do our final highlight, we'll go back and kind of burn the edges a little bit and uh, make it all kind of crispy. That helped a great deal to kind of break up the monochrome appearance of this, at least from one side. You can't really see it on that side, but that's okay. So we're going to let that dry a little bit, and then we'll start doing more of our top highlights. In the meantime, I'm going to, once this is totally dry, dry brush this whole base with some tan and, and maybe some maple sugar tan, kind of a yellowy highlight, just to build that up and make it pop a little bit. To get that kind of crispy edge, I'm just going to take a sponge, a little bit of black paint, and we'll just add that on there to taste, to get kind of a, a burned, not super distinct, it's just kind of a fuzzy area, but, and again, just do that to taste, and then we'll basically dry brush that up with a little gray and a little white, and, and give that kind of a, a toasted appearance. Once we have the edges charred to um, our satisfaction, and we'll take just dry brush up from gray and uh, various grays, dark gray, medium gray, and then all the way to white, kind of along there, and just give that a nice kind of a toasty appearance. And I think a little goes a long way here, but again, just do that to taste. All right, that's a little closer to what I was going for. I also, uh, along the bottom where the bricks were, I dry brushed those with the maple sugar tan that I did use the ground cover to give it a dusty appearance. And probably lost most of that by hitting it with some soft tone just to kind of accentuate the lines, the mortar lines for the bricks. But uh, Plus it gave them kind of a grimy appearance, so I was pretty happy with that. So we're going to add a few tufts and I think we'll call it good. So after a few tufts and some static grass, there's our completed terrain piece. I uh, think it came out pretty good. Looks like maybe a super mutant hit this with a big missile or something. I don't know, but it bloated up real good and set it on fire. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this. Hopefully it inspires you to make something awesome, and I hope you have a fantastic day.